on youtube it's your boy ogt man and today we gonna watch the strange disappearance of Shaq west now when he dropped mo bamba i thought the nigga was gonna keep going i heard he had dropped a few more songs but then just after that era i don't know where he went i'm, I'm trying to figure it out hopefully we can get down to the bottom of this anyways if you're new to the channel make sure to like come to subscribe and without it being said let's get into the video Wes made one of the biggest songs of the 2010s a few years back, but lately, that man ain't really been around at all. I mean, just take a look at his Apple Music. His last project came out of 2018, and his last solo single dropped back in November of 2022. So, what happened? See, Shaq was originally from New York, but he had bounced between New York and Milwaukee. And growing up in these two completely different places had all these effects on them, both good and bad. But as life was starting to change during the early 10s, C Shake would start rapping it like a leg. But as he got older, he was getting into more and more things. And it got to a point where he was playing basketball real head but right in the middle of that whole high school basketball career. He got into model and it was doing real good. I'm talking about he was getting money. <laughs> Why you look like one of them African dads? <laughs> I'm not trying to talk shit. Son, go get your ass in there. What the fuck is you? <laughs> uh, uh, nah, that's funny. That's real funny. Oh, let's get back to the video. My bad. He was doing real good with modeling at that time, but that came with a lot of problems. Number one, see that man was a basketball player, and it would be times where instead of him going to practice, that was going mad. And with that, him and his coach kind of started to fall out. When he had spoke on how that affected his life, this what he had to say. I wanted to be a part of this thing people are going to talk about forever. And this was something. Mm. Mm. Nobody did before. So I was happy I did Yeezy Season 3 because it opened up a lot of doors for me. Shit was feeling like one of the best decisions he ever made was skipping out on practice to go model. But the second problem, that man was still in high school. Meaning when he would go model and skip out on practice, he was skipping out on homework, study for tests, putting in that schoolwork. He was really putting school behind him and bringing modeling to the front. See, really think about it. He was 17, broke as hell, not really having nothing for himself. Not all of a sudden, his modeling taking off. He making a couple thousand. So, of course, he was going to put school in the back pocket and focus on what was bringing him money. It wasn't even just school for real. He in New York, and that was bringing him all kind of problems. But lastly, and the biggest thing of all, number three, that man is F. And that culture and the way they look at things is completely different from how most of us in America feel about things. See? With their culture, they focus a lot about knowledge. Knowledge is their main focus, and they always just want to learn. So when his mama seen him putting modeling in front of everything else, she ain't like that. She ain't like the fact that he was out here doing what he wanted instead of what she looked as the right thing for him. See, with Shake, she had seen a vision. And at that time, you got to think about it. That man was 17 years old. He ain't really understand life for real. And one day, she sat and told him, instead of you sitting here putting all this in the modeling, what you should be working on is becoming a boss instead of just being a worker she basically just wanted him to be something more than what he was doing and she felt like the only way he would achieve that if he went through with school and right at the height of all his success and right at the height of him getting all this money you know what she do she packed that man up sent his ass to africa meaning he lost god damn damn that's where he been at he been over there in africa damn my dudes I see what she tried to vision to get him back on track, but god damn. God damn. Any deals he had going on, any bag he had going on in New York, everything he had going on just got ended like that because she sent him to Africa. But the way he got sent to Africa was crazy. See, around this time, he was just trying to get out of the country. He ended up making a fake passport to get to London. And you probably thinking, this 17-year-old boy went all the way to London and his mama was just... Dang, that's crazy. Shaq was just trying to make that cash. Now look, got his ass caught. It's just cold with it? <laughs> no, sir. He waited to the very last second to let his mama know it was going. But remember what I said. That passport wasn't valid. So Shaq get all the way to London, and they sent him right back to New York. But it was a problem. Since that passport wasn't legal, basically all the stuff he had with him just got lost. So he just came back to New York with nothing. All the clothes he brought, any devices he brought with him, basically everything he had took in his bags was gone. And so he come back and he probably down, he probably sad. And his mama come up to him with an opportunity. She was like, look, you want to do all this traveling? 
I'll take you somewhere to travel. So she was like, look, you can go to New York and see your brothers and see your family and everything. And at first he was hyped. He was like, oh, I get to travel. And the second he got off that flight, he must have realized he was cut. Because originally he was supposed to be in Africa for just two weeks, right? But he realized it was going to be a lot longer than two weeks. And this one moment would change how he looked at everything forever. Well, I had like forged my own passport. Like, I did my own paperwork for my passport because I was trying to go to London with my <laughs> friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta I gotta walk these runways, mama. You ain't understanding. No, it wasn't even that. I was always making music. You know, okay, but I was you. gonna go to London to really. My friends were. They, I was working with this group called Spaghetti Boys, mm -hmm. where it was three of them, you know, and they was gonna work on their clothing and things like that. And I was gonna work on my music. So while I was in London. So that's why I really, you know, was forging my passport doing all of that because I was playing basketball that year mm -hmm. and then. Uh, modeling really severed my ties with my coach. So much things, and then my mom asked me, so I'm traveling, you know, I'm lit. She asked me, yo, you wanna go to Africa? Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I wanna go to Africa. You know, cause I was always interested in my culture, and me and my family, and I never been. How different was the world when the airplane doors close? You know? When you take off, then when the airplane doors open? You mean like when I landed it? So first of all, when you first like landed in any place, you could see the city from a high, mm -hmm. you know? And seeing Senegal from a high, you know, I was just seeing like, like you fly in with the ocean and then it's like everything changed. It's like, you know when you're watching Black Panther and they're like really flying yeah. into Wakanda? <laughs> it's like, you're like, oh my God. You're really like, whoa, like. And you know, everything had to look different. Everything was different, Every, everything. And as he got bigger, he spoke on what it was like going to Africa. When I got to Africa, I met my big brother for the first time. He asked me for my passport, and I'm like, nah, I'm not giving nobody my passport. And this was the day I landed. People here steal these. And I'm thinking, damn, I don't want nobody stealing my passport. So I just gave it to him. And that was the last time I saw it until the day I left. That's how they kind of blackmailed me. They was like, oh, if you want to go home, you got to do this, you got to do that. And the list was just getting longer and longer. My mom tried to force me to go in this religion institution thing. And I said, no, I went to the U.S. Embassy and they said legally they couldn't do anything until I was 18. So my mom won that battle and I had no choice to stay out there until I was 18. That was four months. It took that man four months to get back home. But after he got back from Africa, that was when his music career really started. That was when things were really changed for him. And when time that decision to send him to Africa would actually show his benefits. June 16th, 2017, his life changed forever. He dropped a song that would really put him on the map. Mo Bamba, this song blew up everywhere, picking that number six. Mind you, two days after my birthday, on my cousin's birthday, billboard, but the question is, how did it even come to be? See, back when he was growing up playing basketball, he ended up becoming friends with someone, a man named Mo Bamba. And remember what I said mm. earlier? Shaq started rapping real early in life. And when Mo Bamba heard that Shaq was rapping, he was like, look, bro, I just want a beat in a verse. You don't got to be a song about me. You don't got to be none of that. I just want my name in a verse one time. And when Shaq heard that, he ran with it. He made a whole song. He turned what was supposed to be a verse into a whole song. Shaq said, I had a meeting with a friend of mine who worked at Nike at the time. And I was just talking to him about all my frustrations with the labels and everybody calling me, the people, the manager, all the real and the fake, and how my phone won't stop ringing. And after that combo, I just went to the studio right after. 16-year-old invited me to the studio with Day Trip, and we all started making this beat. And then... We made the beat. I was like, all right, I'm going to rap on it. And I rapped on it. Then my friend Mo Bamba, who was a draft pick, asked me to put his name in a song or something. But I just started freestyling. I was freestyling about all the people calling me. And I guess it was just what I was talking about and how frustrated I was. I made the one take freestyle about Mo Bamba and how I'm like Mo Bamba. Like I'm an athlete. Like I was being recruited the same way athletes do. So... That's why I compared it. And you heard what he said. Mm -hmm. That song was a whole play on how Mo Bamba was getting all these calls to get recruited, like how Sheck West was getting all these calls to get signed to a label. And I'm telling you, the labels mm -hmm. was calling in. February 2018, he signed a joint deal with Good Music and Cactus Jack under Interscope. And if you somehow don't know, Cactus Jack is Travis Scott label, and Good Music is Kanye's label. But 2018 would be a decent year for bro, until it wasn't. He signed a deal, dropped his debut and only album, Mud Boy, and kind of made a name for himself. But right before 2018 with it, rumors started to come out about Shake West and a woman named Justine Scott. She had came out Aww. telling the word about some of her DV stroke, and she came to the internet basically saying she had a partner in the past, and even though she didn't say no name specifically, people kind of lined the dots up and everything pointed to Shake West. 
and people on Twitter got to speculating on if it was Shake West or not. And guess what she was doing? Liking the tweets that was accusing Shake West of doing what he claimed he did. But we wouldn't get a real response from him on this situation until some months later. February 11th, 2019, she came out confirming it was Shake West she was talking about. She got on Twitter talking about, you pathetic Shake and you hit women. You hit your girl. No. No, no, no. See, this why, this is exactly why staying down with my people. If I blow up, cool. I thank God and everything. Make sure I stay on his path and I ain't dealing with these industry fucking females or these other females in general, unless it's people that I pick, not the industry, not whoever. These motherfuckers are devious. Now, if it's true, Check where she should be a damn shame to yourself. But if it ain't true, either way it goes, it's still like, damn. For me, and you will do it again. I was taking a walk with my friends, and Shake Wes and his friends decided to stalk us and attack my friends. Two cars full of niggas. He sat in the car like a bitch. You pathetic, and you hit women. You hit your girl before me, you'll do it again. This is why I stopped. Dang, dang, dang. Dang, Shaq. Again. You pathetic and all the people defending you, your whole bitch has like everyone. You spreading lies about me. Moral of the story is if you never put your hands on me, you wouldn't be in this situation and you just keep making it worse. And after this, Tay was just getting into it on Twitter. After she said all that she said about shit, he responded back. I chose to remain silent to now out of respect for actual victims of a but I cannot stand by where lies are repeatedly told about me. I never hit or beat on any woman. And I did not beat up or jump anybody. She replies, I literally have footage of you jumping over the fence of my crib to attack me. Your lies are even more disrespectful. Then she posts messages with her and Chase B. She said all of your friends know what happened. July 26 at 10 a.m. She hit up Chase B talking about, please hurry. I think he's breaking things. I locked myself in a room, please. Chase B, I'm calling everybody I know in LA. They on the way, are you good? She said, I'm terrified. Can you let me know when somebody here, please? And basically after she posted all the messages, Shake said back, show us your bruises. Not me hopping over the fence to get my stuff back, Justine. Asked my real girlfriend, I never hit you. He sent another tweet out, just clarifying. The video of me hopping the fence is to get my stuff back from a girl who refused to give me my stuff once again. For the record, I never hit or beat up any woman. And look, after this, I'm guessing the label took this nigga phone or something because he went from them arguing on Twitter to his team giving an official statement. They said, we actively investigating the allegations against Shaq West and are fiercely standing by him through this. He's denied any wrongdoing whatsoever or violence in any kind. And we do believe, and with any and all legal remedies available for now, we will lead this with the legal process. Then on top of all that, she was even mad at the cops. She said she came to get help and they was just being real disrespectful. She posted her story, different precinct now, trying to file the last report, but they being so rude, dismissive, and disrespectful. Call me a difficult victim and he wouldn't even let me finish telling him what happened before he could give me at least the reasons to why he can't help me. That wasn't all she posted though. This is why most women don't go to or call the police, by the way, especially dealing with male officers, deputies, whatever. Please don't let them discourage you because I for sure not. And eventually, after all that went down, a few days later, she was granted a restraining order against Sheik, but that wasn't the end of the situation. Nearly a month later, a L.A. district attorney decided not to go through with none of the charges. And look, this situation had a real bad effect on his career. I'm talking about he was getting dropped from sponsors, people was looking at him crazy, and it was a rough 2019 for bro, because this year was filled with a lot of problems. Later on that year, this man decides to go to Sweden, and this wasn't a normal time for Sweden. This was the time where ASAP Rocky was locked up. Now look, me personally, if a nigga was going through what ASAP Rocky was going through, I'm not going to that country. I don't know why Sheik even stepped foot in Sweden after he seen what was going on. But he say he touched down in Sweden, police just start rushing him. He said police frisked me and the whole gang down in Sweden, stripped and searched my means with no consent. We just had to agree. It was wild aggressive. European country police always trying to make and use examples on tourists that's unsturdy. But even past all the problems, throughout 2019, we didn't really get no music from Shaq. Yeah, he was on Jack Boys at the end of 2019, but Shaq was really out the way. Until one day during 2020, 
he got locked up out the blue. Back in May of 2020, he was out driving around New York City, but he wasn't in no regular car. He was driving in a 2019 land. So that automatically made him more of a target than a regular person for twin. I don't really think he took into account how much attention this would bring him because he was riding crazy. And remember, that man is in New York. They strict as hell out there. But police pulled him over. They say the car smell like gas. And if the car smell like gas, it's gonna get searched. But they searched the car, find out he don't even got a license on him. And he had a Smith and Wesson. No! In New York. A pistol in New York out of the whole country. New York. No. You, you driving around fast. You ain't got no license. And on top of that, you got the Smith in? No, nigga, no. If I'm gonna have a gun, I'm, I got to have my license on me at all times. Both license, license for the pipe and license to, that I can drive, right? You see what I mean? It's ranked second on the street, this gun laws out the whole country. So he got arrested at 12, hit him with two felonies. Criminal possession of a loaded strap and criminal possession of a strap. But the problems kept coming at him. Remember the whole DD case with Justine? Well, her boyfriend, Golding, was with her during the time of that whole case. And back in 2019, I didn't speak on it. He was kind of throwing shots at shit with. But Are you interested in starting? No, I'm not interested in whatever you're talking about. But fast forward to 2021, I don't know if they was getting into it behind the scenes, but one day out of the blue, he comes online, hops on Twitter, snapping on shit. And even and before I read it to you, to me, it looked like this was a little promo run. Because on the very last tweet, Gold Link gonna start promoting his album. And to make it look like even more of a clout chasing move, Gold Link didn't send out no tweets from December 2020 to June 9th, 2021, when he started snapping his shit wigs. June 9th, he get on Twitter. If shit wears, I'm about to drink some cat and spit on you and your white teeth. Shake it ain't my fault that your man got jumped, got spanked. Then one of your mans got shot. Bloody white walls, be Harlem world. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Album out June 18th. Now look, clout chasing off the man your ex girlfriend said was a uh, is crazy to me, but that is. I guess we don't know. And that was about the last controversy he was in for years until just a few days ago. See, y'all know how the music space is right now. Carnival everywhere. The whole world loved that song. But when it first came out, some people noticed some things about it. It sounded real similar to Mo Bamba. And right after the song dropped, if you go take a look at YouTube, there's so many mixes of Carnival and Mo Bamba. And guess what? They match up real perfect. You can tell that was kind of a song that Shit Wiz would have fit on perfect. And look, I'm going to just read you a couple of tweets about the song. You'll be lying if you said Carnival didn't sound like Mo Bamba. I just know the matchup is going to be tough. Carnival sound like the March Madness version of Mo Bum. And see, when Carnival went number one, it kind of changed something in Kanye's head. Like, the whole way he thought just changed. And Kanye just hopped on IG, snapping. He was being real cocky. Everyone know I watched Kendrick on No More Parties in LA. Everyone know I watched Drake at the Free Hoover concert. Everyone know I brought Adidas into this culture and I took them out. Everyone knows Lotta, Dem the Virgil, Jerry, Kim, all worked for me. I made Yeezus. Dark Fantasy, Pablo, Graduation, Throne, 808, I Made Runaway, Devil in a New Dress, Father Stretch, I am the one. <laughs> bro, what's up with this nigga, bro? I am the only person to come back to a number one after cancellation. There is only one goat I stand by, me. And I guess when Shaq seen how Kanye was acting, he couldn't take it no more. He had to say something. You stole my whole cadence, flow, beat, tempo to get a number one. You delusional, and you ain't check in with the buses. You niggas really bugged out. And at first, I think shit was kind of cool with it. He was like, all right, you stole my flow a little bit. You biting from me, but that's all right. Until he started bragging about something that shit felt like was his own Sam. And surprisingly, Kanye didn't yell or cuss bro out. All he did was repost Mo Bamba and shit Wes comment to his story. Who knows if this beef gonna go anywhere else? But it's still a question I didn't answer. Where is Sheck West? Why would he come into the music industry, make all these connections, do all of this, just to not make no music? Exactly. Well, we got to go all the way back to when he was in high school playing basketball. That man loved basketball a lot. Deep down, all he wanted to do was play basketball. And yeah, his music career might have blew up, but his love for basketball was too deep. Meaning, as time went on, he would push his music career to the back and bring focusing on basketball to the front. I'm talking about he was deep 
Mm. Now go back a few years, 2020. He was online claiming he was in the 2020 NBA draft. Damn, it's real. The 2020 NBA draft. All my life, I just wanted to follow my passion for music and basketball. Playing basketball and going pro in the NBA was something I always stood for. Tonight, dreams come true. I want to thank the NBA for their hard work. I also want to thank my team and my fans for being there as I tune into the 2020 NBA draft tonight. Now, did he actually get drafted? No. This was just all a promo run for a single, but that don't mean he wasn't really hooping for real. During that time, he ended up joining the LNB Elite Paris basketball team, and if you don't know what that means, that's the top tier professional basketball league in France, and that's really where he been. He's just been hooping. Even though he barely spoken about in the music space, a lot of people do respect him musically. And the worst part of all, probably the biggest hell he done taken a minute was he could have been on the hit last year. If you don't know, the original version of Fiend by Travis Scott, he was featured on it, but got took off before the official release. So imagine how good that would have been for his career. And the thing is, it's not like the song just got scrapped or got lost with time. If you buy the vinyl version of Utopia, the Shaq Wes version of Fiend is on there. But like I said, he is still respected, kinda. Like the people from my last video, Ayo and Tayo, they came out just like shit was. Alright, dang, that's crazy. That 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 was a that was a good run of stuff right there. And it's about one of the longest reaction videos I made. But um anyways, appreciate y'all for watching the video. Dang Shaq. I see what you try to do right there. I see what you try to do. These people chasing for money. Hey man, that's hey. Hope that hope that basketball career going good. But anyways, it's your boy OGT Me. Signing out. Eat it.